Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck, and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks. Alas, it is me, and it is not me, all at the same time. Um, unfortunately for you, I'm currently taking up eight pages of this month, uh, this month being August 2019, copy of Guitarist magazine. Now, this is a dream come true for me, joking aside, honestly, it's utterly surreal and a tremendous honour. So thank you very much for the guys at Guitarist magazine, and if you're not sick to death of the sight of me by now already, go out and grab a copy, or at least go and read one in your local newsagents. Um, it's an eight-page feature on me, uh, with an interview, some kind of pedal talk, some guitar talk, pickup talk, um, and a kind of lesson section at the end, bringing down some licks that I play and talking you through how I kind of envisage unlocking the fretboard. So as I said, if you're not sick to the death of uh, seeing me, go grab a copy. But anyway, back around to the topic of today's video, which if you hadn't guessed from the introduction, is Gilmore's Strat. Now, if, like me, you were outbid um, at the auction last week, I hit my limit at about £2.8. Uh, pounds. Um, needless to say, there's a fair amount of people out there who were not in a position, should we say, to bid $4 million on a guitar. But if you're looking for something that, at least aesthetically and sound-wise, which we'll come on to in a minute, kind of, you know, has some characteristics in common, then you may be interested in today's video. Now, to be honest, this is a little bit of a ramshackle video in that it's comprised of a few bits and bobs, quite literally, that I kind of forgot I had. A couple of weeks ago, sorting through some stuff, I found an old black Squire body that I bought years ago, or dismantled from a previous guitar, I can't quite remember, that I totally forgot that I had. I simultaneously also found a maple neck in a box that, again, I bought years ago, and I never got anything, kind of you know, got around to doing anything with it. Previous owner, um, and very kindly stuck, or very naughtily stuck, a Fender decal on it, so I can take no credit for that, so don't shoot the messenger, um, but it isn't a Fender neck. It's, it may well be a Fender license neck, I'm not entirely sure what it is, to be honest, but it's a nice profile and it plays pretty nicely. Cobble the two together and voila, with the black scratch plate, we kind of have something that at quick glance is pretty reminiscent of the black strat that sold for a record amount last week. Now, in terms of sound, the kind of main concession and the main expenditure on this guitar are the pickups that I put in it, um, which are a set of radio shop that I commissioned them to make uh, based around the pickup style in the black strat. Now, it's a kind of bit of a mismatch, to be honest, but as you will hopefully hear, they do sound pretty well matched, despite not really being all that well matched in terms terms of their output and their wire. So in the neck we have what is based on a Fat 50s, a custom shop Fat 50s Fender pickup with an output of 6K. Now in the middle position we have something that's based on a custom shop 69 Strat pickup with an output of 5.8K. That one is a black plain enamel wire whereas the neck is a heavy form VAR. However, the real interesting one comes when we get to the bridge pickup, which has a massive output of 13.3k and is based on a Seymour Duncan SSL5. It is a plain enamel wire and all I can assume that the plain enamel wire has slightly different properties to the other ones because I wouldn't say there is necessarily near, near enough twice the amount of output from this pickup. It's definitely got a little bit of poke infinitely more so than my signature pickups with Radio Shop, but as you will hopefully hear, they are pretty well matched. <laughs> So, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to play anything overtly Floydy, shall we say, in this video, otherwise YouTube will send an assassin out to kill me. So I'm going to jam out on something at the end of this video now, which is kind of being compared to Floyd in a couple of ways, I guess. A little bit proggy, a little bit epic. It's a track from Buck and Emmons' uh, debut album, which will be coming out later this year, and it's the solo section from that track called Sinking. Now, this is an alternate take I stuck down this morning just to see how this guitar sounds, see how it reacts, and it's a little bit kind of vaguely reminiscent of Gilmore, I guess, so um, you'll have to forgive me for there not actually being any 
overtly Pink Floyd stuff in this video. But um, as I said, this was just a little bit of an exercise, you know, a guitar I cobbled together from a couple of parts that I had knocking around. Obviously, Fender do the actual custom shop version of this. They do a Relic version as well, which um, sells for a fair amount, but again, infinitely less than uh, 3.9 million. So do check that out if you uh, want something a little bit more kind of bona fide. But if you're looking to cobble something together, I imagine the total sum of this guitar probably was in the region of about four or five hundred pounds. So all things considered, it's a great guitar, plays very nicely, and I hope you will agree, it sounds pretty cool as well. So um, as ever, I've been Chris Buck, this has been Friday for Works, and I shall see you uh, probably not next week. I'm going to be in France, um, somewhere considerably hotter than South Wales, but more than likely the week after that. So cheers guys, I shall see you soon.